Hi, this is Professor Fernandez uh, working on class notes E from uh, lesson five. So this exercise asks us to show that the roots of the characteristic equation for the free vibrations case are complex and that the general solution is given by this. Um, so let's scroll up a little bit, remind ourselves of what this um, general, uh, sorry, free vibrations case is. So the free vibrations case is when basically c equals zero, meaning that there's no damping, and that's sort of up here. There's no damping, there's no air resistance, um, hence the free vibrations case. And we divide by m to get us here, and then we introduce uh, omega naught squared as k over m to get us over here. Um, you know, you may be wondering where did omega naught squared come from? Why is it useful? And you know, I, I mentioned here that this is part of the this ex example we're doing is part of the reason for introducing that, but also the next theorem um, down here, which uh, will be the next, um, will be the uh, topic of the next video. Um, okay, so let's go back up here and do what we are asked to do. So how do we figure this out? Well, so the ODE in this case, in the free vibrations case, is y double prime plus omega naught squared y equals zero. So let's write out its characteristic equation, r squared plus omega naught squared equals zero. And that's kind of where we see where this is heading. Um, I won't apply the quadratic formula here because it is a little easier to just solve this by moving this term over and then taking the square root. So plus or minus the square root of minus omega naught squared. Um, this is plus or minus square root of negative one times square root of omega naught squared. So that's gonna leave us with plus or minus i omega zero. Okay, so again, we, like in the previous video, are gonna reject the negative imaginary part, characteristic root, because it yields a general solution which is equivalent to the one obtained by taking the positive imaginary part root. So we're gonna do that. Um, in this case, the positive imaginary part root has zero real part, right? So this is our alpha, that's zero. And then beta here is omega sub zero. So let's write out the two solutions that we get. Remember the solutions have the form e to the alpha t cosine of beta t and e to the alpha t sine of beta t. All right, e to the zero t, that's just one. So that leaves me with cosine omega naught t. And e to the zero t again is one, leaves me with sine omega naught t. And these are fundamental solutions based on the work we've done earlier, uh, actually that you'll do in the practice problems to show that in general, e to the alpha t sine beta t and e to the alpha t cosine beta t are fundamental solutions. Um, so I'm just gonna take the linear combination to give us the general solution. C1 cosine omega naught t plus C2 sine omega naught t, right? And that reproduces exactly what we wanted to show. Uh, and I will end with a very quick return to, you know, why we introduced omega naught squared to begin with. Well, notice that the general solution is a linear combination of sinusoidal functions whose angular frequency is omega zero, right? So that is a clue as to what this quantity omega zero represents. It represents the angular frequency of the oscillation of this system. And again, we'll explore that more in the next video.